Today we are diving into the realm of dreams, or rather, a blog post about the realm of dreams release and the year ahead for Guild Wars and the Secrets of the Obscure expansion. So buckle up, we've got a lot to cover, but first, hey you, welcome to my channel, I'm Fornax. Please do consider sticking around, hitting that subscribe button, thumbs up if you like it. I do make other content on the internet. Okay, let's dive into it. The Realm of Dreams arrives on February 27th. Hello Guild Wars 2 community, here's a look at what's coming with Guild Wars 2 over the next few months. Next week we'll be releasing our next major update for Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure, the second of three planned updates that delivers the expansion's full story experience. This update introduces three new story chapters that follow hot on the heels of the events of Through the Veil and pull the Wayfinder deeper into the unfamiliar world of Naos and the Cryptus Society. This update will bring a slew of new features and content additions for Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure, including new weapon proficiencies for all nine professions, the Tier 1 Obsidian Legendary Armor Set, the Legendary Relic, Temple of Feibe Strike Mission Challenge Mode, Expanded Astral Ward Masteries, Tuna Convergence Bosses, and the Skychak Striker Ranger Pet. That first paragraph, packed with things indeed. So, the new weapon proficiency. So if you're not aware, Secrets of the Obscure added new weapons for each profession. And those weapons are as follows. The Guardian will be getting a pistol for both main and offhand. The Revenant will be getting a main hand scepter. The Warrior will be getting a staff. The Engineer will be getting a short bow. The Ranger will be getting a mace for both main and offhand. The Thief will be getting a main hand axe. The Elementalist will be getting a main hand pistol. The Mesmer will be getting a rifle. And finally, the Necromancer will be getting a main and offhand sword. There have been a number of open beaters for these weapons. The devs did a full live stream where they talked about the weapons and the ethos behind them all, and I will link to that Twitch stream below if you want to check it out. But there's only a few short days until you'll be playing with these yourself in the live game. Next up is the Tier 1 Obsidian Legendary Armor. This is the new PvE armor added with Secrets of the Obscure. This is the precursor iteration. Got some beautiful, lovely concept art when the expansion launched. Now here it is live on models and we've got lots of examples of it on different character models as well, which is fantastic. This gear, if you don't know, is heavily inspired by the original Fisher of Woe armor from the previous iteration, previous incarnation of Guild Wars. Here is the old school obsidian armor and here is the new. I love the throwback to the older game. Much love to the devs for using it. Do keep an eye on the channel because I will be doing a full preview, die channels, the whole kit and caboodle of this legendary armor. Once it drops, I will make a video. And let's talk about legendary relics. Legendary relics will arrive on the 27th. If you've already crafted legendary runes, at least one, you will automatically be granted a legendary relic. If you have not done so before this patch, you will have to undertake the new legendary relic crafting path. Just so you know. The Temple of Feibe Strike Mission Challenge Mode coming. Lots of people are very excited for this. The Temple of Feibe was a very challenging strike mission when it landed. People have gotten used to the mechanics now, but I'm very interested to see what they do to us with the challenge mode. It's going to be fun. And of course, we've got the expanded Astral Ward Masteries. No idea what they will be, but I'm looking forward to it. And new Convergence bosses, which people are looking forward to. I feel like people like Convergences, but variety is the spice of life, let's just say. And finally, we get a new Skychak Striker Ranger Pet, which I had no idea about, and this is all good. Okay, so that's my thoughts. Let's move on. This release also includes refreshed rewards for the Wizard's Vault, complete with new seasonal objectives. We're also introducing some changes to the Wizard Vault's daily and weekly objectives to address player feedback. Some objectives have had additional options added so that they can be completed in multiple ways, and some of the less popular objectives have been shelved for the time being. The intent of these changes is to improve the overall feel of the objective selection, reduce friction with the required times for global time events, 
and reduce the number of expansion only objectives that cause players to have different weekly objective lists. I'm very glad that the team is taking player feedback. I know that there have been many valid issues with the objective list, so it's good that right off the bat they're iterating and giving players more options and moving with the tide, so that's all good for me. Let me know what you're hoping for, what objectives you would like to see added, off the beaten path ones perhaps, let me know in the comments. Okay. Now we're on to March 19th system updates. We're introducing more granular options for post-processing graphic settings. Currently there are only three options available for post-processing, off, low and high. Each of these settings controls hidden options such as bloom and color grading and color tint and distortion and light rays and selection outlines, which I don't like personally. These sub-options are now checkboxes in the options menu. Huzzah! Allowing you to pick and choose which aspects of post-processing are displayed. Good, excellent, fantastic. I would still like to see some quality of life colorblind options inputted into the game. And when it comes to things like telegraphing of boss mechanics, I would like a uniformity of the colors so that beneficial effects and negative damaging effects should all have at least a color palette that they adhere to and appropriate colorblind options for people who struggle with these kind of things. Accessibility, but I love to see that we're getting more choice. Skills and balance update. Our next major balance update aims to improve quality of life for some existing builds like Deadeye, bring some unviable builds like power-based Harbinger into the meta and improve some underutilized traits and utilities. The preview for this update can already be found on the official Guild Wars 2 forum. And if we head over to that post, it is a long, long laundry list of changes for all classes, some much more than others. Elementalist, Engineer, Hollersmith, they seem to be getting the lion's share of the changes, but look, there's a lot going on. Um, oh my goodness, Ranger as well. So we will be diving into this probably on the Lightbringers podcast. It's too vast to go into here for a little news update. It's going to be quite long anyway, so I will link to it below. Of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments and do head over to the Lightbringers podcast. We'll be there this Friday and probably next Friday going over all these notes and more. So let's move on to the next topic. Player versus player, expanded champion achievements. Champion achievements that track wins for each profession are being expanded with three additional tiers out of 500 wins, 750 wins, and 1500 wins, with new titles for each. As an example, Engineer will be able to earn the Legendary Genius title at 500 wins, the Fabled Genius title at 750 wins, and the Ultimate Genius at 1500 wins. These achievements will take already earned progress into account. I'm glad that that last sentence was included. Onto World vs. World, Expanded Realm Avenger Achievement. At last, the Realm Avenger Achievement, which tracks player feats in World v. World and awards the ultimate Dominator title, has been expanded with nine additional tiers at 250,000 increments. Each tier comes with a new variant of ultimate Dominator titles, that reflect the number of players that you've defeated. For example, Ultimate Dominator 2. These achievements will take already earned progress into account. Titles are nice. A recognition of effort is lovely. Not entirely convinced that this is the direction, but it's a start. World v World Lord updates. And this actually is something that World v World players will probably quite enjoy. So. We've modernized the loadouts for Castle Keep and Tower Lords with the addition of a new channeled healing skill that aids objective defenders in combat, giving the Lord a more active role in the battle. Attackers will need to keep an eye on the Lord and break their defiance bar to minimize the support they are able to provide. As a note, this is currently a stretch goal for the update and may need to shift out to a future update. So I think anything that helps to kind of shake up and um, modernize the keep castle tower capture is much welcome talking from my personal experience here 
It will be a new thing for the world world players to explore. Undiscovered country of what break bars actually are and what skills you need to use to break them. <laughs> Sorry guys, you kinda you kinda suck in this department. Okay, on to mastery changes. Oblesse oblige. So with the March 9th update, the Oblesh Oblige Central Tyrian Mastery, which increases revive speed and removes downed penalties on successful revive, will no longer remove down penalties in strike missions and raid challenge mode encounters. This will help maintain the intended difficulty level of these encounters by reinstating some penalties for ignoring encounter mechanics. I have done a couple of challenge modes in raids not really in strikes. Let me know your thoughts below. I am agnostic on this at the moment. Moving into April, specifically the 16th when Super Adventure Box returns. So, Moto and his famous invention, the Super Adventure Box, returns to Tyria. The 8 bit game within a game will receive updated rewards and some additions to the World 3 test zone. I'm all for updating the festivals in the game with new rewards to keep veteran players like me interested. Let me know what rewards, what you're looking for in Super Adventure Box below. Looking ahead, our final quarterly update for Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure is just a few months away, bringing with it the story's finale, new foes to lock swords and to shields with, new fractal dungeons and challenge mode, new relics, tier 2 of the obsidian legendary armor set, and a wizard's vault refresh and more. And then our next expansion announcement and its subsequent launch will be around the corner. 2024 is shaping up to be another great year for Guild Wars 2. We'll wrap it up today with one final legendary tease located below. As always, thank you for your ongoing support. We'll see you in game. And this is where we get a gallery of the new legendary armors on different character models. I really love these blog posts. I just wish that they delivered all this information, all these fun reveals in a Twitch stream or a series of TikToks or some shorts or just something that pushes this information out into the wilds of the internet. And hopefully we'll see a little bit more media messaging in addition to in support of the blogs. But that's all the news. Let me know what you have found most exciting in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one. I'm going to do my best to showcase all the new tier 1 legendary armors for you in the upcoming videos. Hopefully we get more story this release, fingers crossed, because I was pretty disappointed with how little narrative we got with the last one. Big shout out to all my supporters over on Patreon and Subscribestar. I cannot thank you all enough for your support, your kindness, your friendship. I really appreciate it. If you would like to join their ranks, links below. And if you feel inspired to jump into Guild Wars 2 and its Soto expansion, or any of its expansions, there are referral links below. Thanks to ArenaNet and their partner program, of whom I'm a proud affiliate, using any of these links directly supports my channel, but costs you not a penny more. And if you want to try free to play, not a penny at all. But we have come to the very end, so until next time, please stay safe, stay awesome, and thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.